Welcome to Threads of Enlightenment, a podcast devoted to helping you overcome challenges in your life that prevent you from becoming the best version of yourself. Each episode features interviews with people from all walks of life about their journey of self-development and the principles they utilize to overcome their fears to achieve their desired outcome. Ready to be enlightened? Here's your host, Ken Primus. So the Threads of Enlightenment, as usual, this is one of my favorite space right here. I get an opportunity to welcome our guests, but I know they're coming with a couple of things. I personally deem very expensive time. Oh my God. Time, what a beautiful, beautiful partner. Once you understand her, once you've learned to respect her, honor her, man, she will honor you, I promise. For those that don't understand her value, I can see it from the choices you make. The other is the journey. The journey is a powerful creator. It has created the individual that is here to share with us wisdom, knowledge, insights, so that we can become better human spirits while we are here on this earth. And that individual is Jen. Jen, thank you for coming to Threads of Enlightenment. Thanks for having me, Ken. I appreciate it. It is an honor to have you here within our family. We bow to you and we welcome you. One of the things that I ask people, the first questions that I ask is, how do you serve mankind? And my audience know the reasons why I ask that. It's to remind them that this mm -hmm. walk is not just about you. It is about us. So I always okay. invite them, hurry up, begin your journey so that you can experience yourself first and then come and experience us because we're waiting for you how do you serve mankind yeah i help women overcome the fears of going through a major change and that major change could be you know i'm i'm 52 so it could be perimenopausal menopausal it could be divorce it could be the kids are out of the home it could be a loss of a parent loss of a child there's a lot of us as we age, you know, a lot of us in that 40 up age group in the woman area that we have major changes. And all of a sudden, maybe when the kids are out of the house, maybe you went through a divorce. All of a sudden you look at yourself in the mirror and say, who are you? Who am I? And I feel that through fitness, nutrition and mindset, that is how I help these women become the better version of themselves noble um profession if you will and i love it i remember i was a single dad had my boys and from the minute they were born i would tell them i can't wait for you guys to leave i'm going to support you until you get out and uh, when they began to escort my space the house and the last one left and the home was empty all their energies were gone cried for months i believe it i believe it I cried for months because I realized that they were all gone. And um, I know that transition and the cost of it and what it does mm -hmm. to an individual because I experienced that myself, that loss. As Even though I was telling them from since there are young kids that I can't wait for them to leave, the irony of all of that was right. so precious in my eyes as to um, I would come home from work Jen, and crying and crying because they they weren't there. One of our right. customs that we do here at Threads of Enlightenment is, is to begin to jump back in that time machine. We go back through sure. this particular portal that is called the memory. And we walk back into some of the, the spaces that we reside for a brief period of time. We call that time years. The first space that we visit is with these two individuals that they are going to tell us and that that's their mom and dad. Mom and dad is a stranger, the brothers and sisters, if you have any, those are all strangers. And so we are put into this space full of strangers. And these two individuals, however they see the world through their trauma, is going to now deposit information into you mm -hmm. as an individual. What did your family look like? Yeah. Uh, older brother, two years. Mom and dad were together for slightly under 10 years. Uh, they went through a divorce. Mom got remarried, I don't know how many years later, but then we, we lived in Michigan. and mom packed us up and moved to Wisconsin. 
And wow. we we were sort of in that shell shock of like what just happened as kids. But we knew that my mom was making the right decision for, for both of us, for my brother and I. My dad was an alcoholic. And but as I grew into myself and in my own journey, I started recognizing that I know he had a ton of trauma as well. He, my dad passed away in 2008, so 16 years of in November it will be. Wow. And um, it made me realize that he too had such major trauma that he had to deal with and he dealt with it through alcohol. And yeah, that, um, that, yeah. that yeah. is the difference how we deal with our trauma because everyone is traumatized, as I said on the onset. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sure mom had hers, but everyone have an opportunity to decide how they're going to deal with it. And that Correct. decision is the individual decision. And it manifests in many different ways um, mm -hmm. uh, for that individual's decision and the effect that it has on the individual and those around in close proximity. So hit mom. Uh, moved you guys, and I know the, the foundation has been shaken, if you will, um, sure. within the family, and you you make this move, and you, yet you knew it was a good move. Mm -hmm. Once you made that move into that location, how did you begin to assimilate within that new location? You have new uh, schools, uh, you have new family or friends, in some cases, no one. How mm -hmm. did you assimilate into this new um, area? You, you know, I, it's interesting that you bring this up because I remember a vision of me walking into third grade in Whitewater, Wisconsin, and thinking, like, what what's going on? And I remember seeing the whole class, like, just staring at me. I walked in, and they just all, like, stared at me. And I thought, oh, gosh, what am I doing? Like, this <laughs> is scary as a as a third grader, right? But yeah. I remember connecting with my uh, good friend of mine, Kim Patton, and her and I were the the different the different kids because <laughs> Kim was black and I was the new kid. Yeah. And so we, Kim and I, we became really good friends and really close friends fast because we were different. We were the, we were yeah. the ones that did not blend in like everybody else. Yeah, isn't it interesting when? Uh, one doesn't blend in. We don't understand the purpose of it when we are young. But as we Correct. get older in life, we understand uh, the purpose of not blending in. And we appreciate uh, the fact that we weren't blending in, if you will. Because right. I think as we blend in, we mm -hmm. are submitting to the program that yes. they are believing and they subscribe to. But when we are outside of the program, part of our life becomes a, um, an observer, if you will. And Correct. so here you are, uh, you were pushed into this thing and you got that quick jolt. I love that. There was a third grader getting that insight, if you will, as to the others, the Stepford. As you're there and you hooked up with Kim, um, how did that make you feel? Because it has to um, encourage you in a way because you found a, a team member, someone that Correct. recognizes that the others are the others. So how did you yeah. relate to each other as you are a part of this new, um, you walked into this class and you found right. a dear connection, if you will. You know, I, I haven't really thought about it until you brought this up, but I think Kim and I bonded with Barbies. Mm -hmm. We bonded with being maybe the different kids being, I don't know, like I can't, I can't really pinpoint anything because I haven't really thought about it that much with, yeah. about Kim, you know, we still stay connected on Facebook, but I haven't reached out, you know, I haven't reached out to her in a long time and just said, thank you, you yeah. know, and I should, because like, <laughs> she really brought me in as that, as that new girl. And it was, yeah. it was very, it was very powerful, very powerful. Yeah. Now that I think about it, because here we were two women, two girls 
being different and that's not a bad thing. No. So as you guys are moving through life, as one is growing, as, as we are aging, if you will, and you are adapting to your new location, what was your relation like with the others outside of Kim? What did that relationship mindset thinking when you engage with them? What was that? You know, I think I think I wanted to be the cool kid, right? I wanted yeah. to not be different. I wanted to be the popular girl. I wanted to be that person. And as I aged over through with time in, in high school, I was that girl that you know, was the cheerleader that played softball, that was, you know, playing softball as a, as a, on the varsity as a sophomore. I was on the student council. I was on the Spanish club. I, like all of these, I was, cause that's, cause I wanted to not be different. I wanted to blend in and be the popular girl. I didn't want to be that girl over in the corner playing with her Barbies. I wanted to be that girl on stage. I did. Mm -hmm. I, and I think now that we're talking about this, like, I think that was, that was what I thought was the cool thing to do. Right. And so the, one of the beauty about me, um, my assignment, Jen, that I feel that I have with my guests is to uh -huh. do exactly what I'm doing with you. Oh, nice. I like it. I like it. Is to begin to delve a little deeper and release some of those. Uh, hidden gems that you had within mm -hmm. there. So here you are, and you wanted to be, you had made a decision within yourself that I wanted to be that popular girl, and you took the steps necessary to make that happen. And I tell people, that's what life is. Mm -hmm. Life is making a series of decisions, internal decisions. I believe those decisions that are life-changing are done by and made by the subconscious individual. I don't believe it's made by the natural mind uh, because the natural mind is flaky. I think the subconscious mind knows exactly what it wants and when it makes that demand because we're energetic, it calls energy, which are people, and you fulfill what you had just made that demand on. And so you demanded that you would be this and you stepped out and began to create it. And as you created it, how how did it resonate with you as you see yourself manifesting, if you will, what you wanted that you had made this decision inside? I mean, for me, I, I, I don't talk about my original job that I, well, there's a, it's a, I, I, I did two things in my world. In 1989, I watched the Ironman World Championship in Kona, Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, by the time I'm 30, I'm going to do the Ironman. So there, mm -hmm. there I was like, sort of like taking that, that, Hey, look at me. Right. Yeah. And, and I, and I actually level. did it. Yeah. And I actually did a TEDx talk about this. I did a TEDx mm -hmm. talk. I was trying to, I was trying to get my dad's attention yeah. through sports because my brother and my dad had that intangible bond that, that we didn't have. Right. Yeah. But then my my career path prior to working with women in the fitness space, I actually I worked at I was mm -hmm. an animal trainer for many years. Uh, I worked with the beluga whales, Pacific white sided dolphins, California sea lions, otters, and I, my last three years were the, with killer whales. I left mm -hmm. in '09, and so like I said, I don't talk a lot about that job because of all the all on people's beliefs. And I totally get that. I understand mm -hmm. we all have opinions, but it was, it was those animals that I absolutely loved. And I wanted yeah. to be that popular girl. <laughs> right? See, I, another reason why I go back with my questions, Jen, is to unearth that right there that you talked mm -hmm. about that um, trauma that, causes us to make decisions to uh, manifest certain things and that trauma that you had spoken about is that bonding with the father and the son that you wanted to do you okay. wanted that type and okay. now based on that data yeah you now as Huge. an individual are going to live your life by making decisions to try to make that a, a, a truth 
to manifest in your life. And so right. we we found that thread that yeah. I love but to uncover. The, the one thing I do have to say, though, after I crossed the finish line to my first Ironman, I realized yeah. I didn't need my dad's validation anymore. Yeah, I know exactly. I'm telling you, this is, um, and that's when you gave birth to Jen. That was the I time did. you gave birth to Jen. Before that, we, and I, I say the same story to, uh, to my listeners. I, I bring in my story as well. I did not become Ken Primus until I was 35 years old. That's when I broke from my parents because until then I was living to please them. And an mm. incident took place in my life with my children. They were coming between my children and I. And that was the very first time as an individual that I stood up to my mom and dad and voiced my displeasure in what they were doing. And at that moment, I realized I just gave birth to myself. I love that. And I was 35 years old with four boys. And so Ooh. we go through life trying to please others until that day when we become uh, an individual, just like you did. When you pass that line, you no mm -hmm. longer recognize the value or the necessity, if you will, in pleasing that. It's yeah. now about me. And so here but, you are. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, like, here I am. Like, that, that was 30 years old, realizing yeah. not pleasing dad. But I've also realized I've done many different changes and transformations of not pleasing mom, not pleasing mm -hmm. anybody, but taking yeah. care of myself. So, yeah. That is the whole thing. That's the game right there. because. Um, subconsciously, we've been programmed, and as we begin to learn all these things, we have to shed. Uh, we have to shed those that are in marriage. You have to shed that belief system and all the stuff about your husband and your wives and all that stuff, because mm -hmm. aspects of you uh, subconsciously was living to try and do things, and that much years later is when you realize what the heck. Um, yeah. So here you are. Um, here is this woman. We're going to jump as your triathlon. And I love the fact that you, let me ask this question. You said you saw it on TV. And then mm -hmm. again, you made that internal decision that I'm mm -hmm. going to manifest this at some point. When you began to navigate towards it, because then you have to implement the plan to make that a reality. When you began to move yourself in that direction, Jen, how did you feel? How did you, how did you relate to you? Because this was something you really wanted. How did you relate to yourself when you were in pursuit of something you really wanted? Mm -hmm. hey, so me getting, me getting to Kona, Hawaii, for the Ironman World Championship mm -hmm. was a two-part two part why. Because my grandfather was my mom's dad, was a very powerful man like I just looked up to him and when he I told him I was going to do the Ironman World Championship he's like I'll go with you I'll be one of your sponsors so he was nice. almost my like my second life. and I was like mm. I have to get to I have to get to Kona and so it took me I got to Kona it took me 28 years I can tell you mm -hmm. that but it got me I got to Kona and I think the biggest thing for me was really really finding myself who I was as a and Let really you, yeah go, go ahead go go no, go ahead when you were there because as an athlete I know uh the athlete's journey because I was one of those you now have to transform yourself one meaning transform your mindset you believe because you have to push the body now beyond its boundaries its limitations all of these mm -hmm. different things you're going to learn as you are um, in the practice form, the preparation form for that race. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about that process because it is a very important process. And I tell people, and athletes and artists, they have the mindset to walk through decisions and, and processes because they have to go through that in their training and in their art. Talk to us about that aspect of transforming yourself in your mind to not become this individual because you're pushing your body beyond 
limits. Right. Dr and drastically we are. So I did. So I tell everybody this. I did 11 Ironmans before I got to. No, I got I did 12 Ironmans before I got to Kona. So yeah. it took me a while to get there. And it was a it was a process. I did four Ironmans and got married, went through like the, try to have kids, all of that stuff. Like it was just an ongoing thing. And then when my ex-husband and I when he got to Kona and I was there watching him and mm -hmm. I was sitting on the pier and I swear I looked over and I saw my grandpa sitting on that pier with me and him saying, what happened to that dream? I thought you wow. were supposed to be in that water with you, with them. And all of a sudden it clicked because yeah. I did four Ironmans, took an eight year sabbatical. And then when I'm sitting on the pier and I see him, I'm like, that's right. This is my dream. Yeah. I was starting to give society their mm. dream. Yeah. I was trying to like I was trying to have kids. I was trying to have, you know, a family. Mm -hmm. Forgot that dream that I originally said to myself when I'm 17 years old. But like you we've talked about, Ken, society was telling me, oh, okay, now you're married. Now you have to have kids. Now you have to have two and a half. Two and a half kids. Now you have to have the white picket fence. Yeah. In reality, and, and 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 the ironic thing from it is when my my ex and I started dating, I said I I don't want any kids. I never mm -hmm. wanted kids. <laughs> mm -hmm. So interesting. Isn't funny. Yeah. So I, 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 I sort of forgot my yeah, dream we, at one point. We do that though. I I think because we, as you said, we we default back to the default. You know, and um, it is maintained for a few years, and then that awakening comes, which mm -hmm. again gives us the opportunity. And I tell people, personal development is not a linear uh, journey. It never will. It's never right. designed to be that way. And if anyone tells you that it is designed to be that way, they are lying. Find yourself another individual that you can that is going to tell you the truth, because it is not a linear um, uh, trip. It has right. all kinds of and I use the example, Jen, of the um, of a plane. You know, let's say something a trip from New York to to Hawaii. When you're you know you're flying, uh, that plane is not a linear journey. It goes all over the place, and they have these little things that are called turbulence. And there's so many different types of turbulence, just like life. There's so many different types of turbulence in life that will cause that pilot to make some adjustments as he's going through. But I tell people, don't lose your compass. Don't lose your North Star. And your your grandfather came back to remind you of your North Star. Uh, aren't sure you did. supposed to be doing that? And when once you get the reminder, what did you begin to do? I immediately took action. When we got back from Hawaii, I said, I'm mm -hmm. signing up for Ironman Florida. And so a year later, I did Ironman Florida. And after that eight-year sabbatical, I, I went to town. And so... I did Ironman Florida, and then five years, consistently for five years, I did two Ironmans a year. And then in 2017, I did Ironman Mont Blanc in Canada. And eight weeks later, I'm in Hawaii because I Talk qualified. Talk to me about it. Yeah. Yeah, you qualify. Talk to me about that. Here Ooh. you are now. That day. I mean, what a rush. Um, emotions are coming from all over the place. Um, your grandfather, the 17-year-old girl, all of it just, just coming at you. How did you embrace all of that? Oh, I, I mean, I get goosebumps just thinking about that day still <laughs> because it was absolutely magical. My sister-in-law came with mm -hmm. my niece, and at that time my niece was 12. And then mm -hmm. my nephew was 16, 17, 16. And yeah. I remember having, I just, I went there just knowing that I'm like, I'm going to qualify. I'm going to yeah. qualify. And I remember talking to a girlfriend. She's like, Jen, I want you to pretend you're, you're Pac-Man. And every time <laughs> you, you go and you run, you gobble somebody up. You grab their you grab their energy. Energy. You yeah. grab their energy. And so mm -hmm. when when I would pass my the women in my age group, 
I felt like I had more energy. So, yeah. so my first, my first loop on the run, I kept looking at my time. I'm like, oh my God, I'm, I'm going fast, but this is good. <laughs> this is good. Maintain it, maintain it. And then I yeah. come around and I see my niece, my nephew and my, and my sister-in-law and I stopped and I give them a hug and a kiss. And I'm like, and they're like, go, go, go keep running. I'm like, no, <laughs> I need your energy. I need your energy. And, um, the last mile and a half, I remember going gulp, gulp, and I'm like, Whoa! you know, and then I would like, I would play this game with me. Yeah. And I remember crossing the finish line, arms up in the air. I clocked under 11 hours. Wow. And I, I just, I broke, like, I just put my hands in my head and I just screamed because I know, I knew I had one of the best race of my life, yeah. but I had no idea where I was in placement. And, yeah. uh, and my niece said to me, like, as I was like puffing and puffing and like down a, on my knees and she's yeah. like, Aunt Jennifer, did you qualify for Kona? And I said, baby, I don't know, but that was one of my best races of my life. And then yeah. I found out they looked on, looked on the app and they were like, Jen, you placed third in your age group. I was like, what? Wow. And then I said, <laughs> who, I said, I knew the woman who placed first who already got the slot to Hawaii. Yeah. And there was two slots for my age group at that time. And I mm -hmm. knew I was going to Hawaii. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. When you got into Hawaii, that's another thing. Talk to us. Oh, little, that's as... a whole other. I, ha I have, I don't, we don't have time for that. But <laughs> honestly, though, Ken, it was weird because yeah. so butterflies is a very strong symbol for me when mm -hmm. it comes to my grandfather. So I'll give the backstory on that is that when I was training for a world championship for the duathlons for the Team mm -hmm. USA in 2001, my grandpa passed away. And I remember mm. going out there training and I'm in San Antonio and I go crest the hill and I was like, what am I doing? Why am I out here? My grandpa just died. And all of a sudden I had a swarm of all these yellow butterflies wow. and I'm like, okay, grandpa's here. So butterflies throughout my whole life, even to this day in Costa Rica, when I see those yeah. big blue morpho butterflies, like yeah. grandpa's around me and I know like, I'm like, where am I at? Who am I with? What's going on? And it's so it's yeah. always just a reminder. But Ken, when I went down the hill to turn right on Alihi Drive and I saw the finish line, I saw my mom, her dad. So that's her dad. I saw mm -hmm. my mom's best friend. I was like, I slowed down because yeah. I didn't want to say goodbye to him. I was like, I don't want this journey to end because it's like, that was that bond that my grandpa and I had for years. You know, I really feel like my grandpa was more of a father yeah. figure to, to me than my dad was. Anyways, when I turn and there are, and I could send you some photos of me cross, like Please. I am, I am crying my eyes out because it's like, yeah. oh my God, I made this journey. I did it, Grant. And I looked up and I looked up to him. I grant I said, Grandpa, we did it. We yeah. absolutely did it. But the great thing is is that my grandpa's still around around oh, me yeah. to this day, which is beautiful. That is uh, I'm sure he'll come and visit and, and encourage you in life's uh race as well. He what does. a powerful, powerful uh story, Jan, to um walk with this 17 year old all the way until she makes yeah. it and is able to uh, enjoy it through the emotions of tears and just crying mm -hmm. of the accomplishment. So talk to us because I know um, you have uh, your press for time. When your world began to crumble, as they say, that day the visitation of that walks into us and we all have an opportunity to expand. I think those days come, Jen, to expand mm -hmm. us um, because we can get comfortable, if you will. And stagnation is one of the most um, mm -hmm. dangerous places to be in a life, uh, to be stagnant without moving. It's lots of critters when you look at a stagnant water housed there. So as you are, you've done your accomplishment, you've major um, achievement, 
you mentioned the fact of a divorce. Let's talk a little about that because a lot of women out there are sure. fractured right here and uh, feel as if there is no, they can't move on. Um, mm -hmm. Talk to that younger uh, Jen and in relation to the others that are listening outside uh, of that conversation, talk to that younger Jen about what you, the older Jen, knew while she was there. Uh, uh, encourage her, if you will, and, and those that are listening to us that are in that space as well. You're going to be okay. So the older Jen would tell the 17-year-old Jen that you're going to be okay. And that I, my heart tells me that I, this was the path I was supposed to be on. Mm. I was supposed to go through the divorce. I was supposed to go back to the girl I once was. One thing I, a lot of people assumed that I moved down to Costa Rica to run away from my marriage, to run away from the divorce. But in reality, I went back to the girl I used to, and I was that, I, I really feel that I was that free bird when I was with Kim. Kim and mm -hmm. I were just our doing our things. We just, we didn't, Kim and I did, Kim and I, now that I think about it, right? Yeah. And, and then society tells me, oh, you should be this way. You should do this. You should do that. You know, um, mm -hmm. I've always been very strong with water. And so, you know, here I was, you know, for many years, I was working at SeaWorld. I was around water. And then all of a sudden, I'm a triathlete. I found I'm I'm around water. Like it, water is my nature. And when all of a sudden I didn't have water anymore, I was like something something's missing. Something's yeah. missing. And once I asked for the divorce with my ex, people thought I was crazy. Why would you do that? Why would you leave this? He didn't abuse you. He wasn't this. Da, da, da. It was all society. It's like, so do you want me to sit here and go through something that I'm not happy in anymore because society tells me to? No, mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. That's, that's not healthy for me. Yeah, I, I hope, um, uh, Jen, I always try to encourage my listeners to learn to transition from listening. We have to start there to become a hearer. That's where stuff gets done. Uh, when one hears, it's the inner man, that um, uh, subconscious individual. When he picks it up, um, it becomes a reality. And I want to pose this question to all of you out there, um, especially the women in a marriage or even a man in a marriage that is stifling your growth. This question must be answered by you. Who are you without the children? Who are you without your husband? Who are you without mom and dad? Who are you without your friends? Who are you? Spend time to get that answer because it's very important. It will guide your decision process and you will learn once you begin to get some insight into that question, it will guide you and move you through your pain. So here you are. You've made your decision. You got some water. I know Costa Rica. I have my brother and uh, his wife are going to move that way. When you began to, when you severed yourself from the pain, from the programming of society, and you now are returning to yourself, to Jen. Mm -hmm. What did it look like? It's never uh, that rosy picture. There's a lot of Ew. fearfulness in there, but you know that that North Star is still driving you on. What did that fearfulness look like, Jen? And how did you um, navigate through it? Oh, I was scared. I mean, I moved. I left. I left the life that I knew. I left a three thousand yeah. square foot home with beautiful furniture. I had a I had a Jeep Wrangler. I had I mean I had everything that I a girl walk could have materialistic wise. But when I realized that it wasn't serving me anymore, it wasn't 
it wasn't fulfilling me anymore. I had to figure out, well, what, what does fulfill Jen? And, and when shows, I was either going to move to Costa Rica, Hawaii, or California. Obviously, mm. I chose Costa Rica. But I said to myself, what does this version of Jen look like? And there was many nights I cried, many nights that I would journal. I would wake up in the middle of the night and just write about love and heartbreak because I didn't know what else to do. I had to get it out on paper. I would go to the beach and meditate every morning. I still try to do that. I don't do it as much as I should because I'm in a much better place, but mm -hmm. I still, I still do that. I still journal. I still write, but you could see the shift in my writing. The yeah. shift is definitely a stronger, I, I don't want to say that I'm healed because I don't think we're ever completely healed, but yeah. healed from going through, going through that divorce. Yeah. I hope you were hearing again what she said. Um, she invited several powerful tools that are out there into her being to partner with her to move her through her pain. Journaling is one of the most powerful ones out there, writing. Uh, then you have meditation. All of these tools uh, Jen brought into her space to assist. Uh, they mm -hmm. became her friends, her confidant, her buddies, if you will. And they are powerful allies to bring into your space to assist you. Meditation, as you guys know that have listened to this, program have saved my life and I still meditate. I love I love doing it because it helps me to get to know me. Um, mm -hmm. It helps me to um, become much more of a creator because it gave me power to choose which thoughts I want to give permission to manifest right. in my life. That is where you get your power. Go ahead, Jen. Uh, yeah, and where I get my power is strength training. <laughs> The strength training has brought, I, I strength train five days a week, and mm -hmm. then I found a new love, and that love is, is called a surfboard. And <laughs> I started surfing about a year ago, and it has been the most fulfilling time in my life. And all yeah. I need is an ocean and a yeah, and I, I don't have people. my phone. Yeah, I don't have Go my ahead. phone. I don't have a computer. I don't have anything. It's me in the water. Yeah, you don't have all those limitations. Mm -hmm. I keep telling people. Mm -hmm. There are so many different ways to change your state. And meditation, that's what it is. Journaling, um, writing. It's a change of state. Um, mm -hmm. Whatever yours is, find it. Jen talked about it, surfing. There's millions out there, guys. You look into yourself and find what helps you to change your state? It may not be the classical meditation. I remember interviewing someone, a uh, housewife, and she said vacuuming was brought her, brought her into yeah, that state. Sure. So uh -huh. whatever that state is for you, please, please find it because I'm telling you, yeah. it will bring you much joy and happiness. And I know that uh, um, Jen has another commitment. And what I'm going to do is I want to bring her back because I'm going to bring her back and we're going to have this conversation from when she got to Costa Rica because she, she, when you get there, you all think it's rosy and nice, but then I tell you what, girl, you got to you gotta put your work uh, together and that's where the journey really begins. Yes. And I know she has another um, commitment. And so what we're going to do is bring her back. Um, I love that. I'll let her, uh, you know, give us the schedule and we will bring her back so that we can continue this conversation and we're going to pick it up from when she gets from uh, costa rica and how she was able to do that in the meantime i want to encourage you guys we're going to give you all of her links she's an author multi-author i think there's like three books she has mm -hmm. um get familiar with her because when we bring her back we're going to get more familiar with her and you know how i feel about books books house power those words mm -hmm. will if you allow the words to do what they are what they are known to do they will change your life and that is you must put yourself in a state of um to receive when you go to her books don't just go there just to read a book go there expecting to be changed if you yeah. do that 
you will be changed. And you so um, she has other sites. We're going to provide all those links. She does uh, nutrition and all of these things. She is valued. Her wisdom and knowledge can sustain you and take you into other aspects of yourself. And so we want to honor her and thank her for coming to Threads of Enlightenment and be respectful of her time and uh, so that she can keep her appointments. And Jen, I want to thank you so much. Thank and you. we're going to uh, uh, get all your links and everything so that people can get access to you Great. so that you can take them to that next level of their journey. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ken. Appreciate you. You're, you're welcome. Run to your own. Thanks for tuning in to Threads of Enlightenment with Ken Primus. Hopefully you're now feeling more empowered to overcome the challenges in your life, whatever they may be. Share that inspiration with others by telling them about this podcast, rating it, and of course, remember to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. For more connection, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram by searching for Threads of Enlightenment. Until next time, stay enlightened.